Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we conclude this special two-part message titled The Satanic Nature of Same-Sex Marriage. We taught this message in response to a movement in the state of Ohio to encourage preachers to preach in support of same-sex marriage. This message is our response to that request, and it's to be aired during the two weeks in which more than 200 apostate clergy are joining in meetings across the state of Ohio to support this wicked perversion. Bible Believers Fellowship will be airing this two-part message on local radio in Central Ohio and around the world at freedomfm.org, bbfohioradio.com, Sermon Audio, YouTube, and uh, GodTube, as well as being featured on our own website, bbfohio.com. And before going into our study, we want to repeat our call to our listeners. If you attend a church with a pastor who preaches in favor of same-sex marriage, we call on you to denounce such wickedness, to resign your membership in that apostate church, and to withhold any further financial support for Satan's false church. And we encourage all who are listening as we conclude this message titled, The Satanic Nature of Same-Sex Marriage, to share the online message links with your loved ones, your Christian friends, and your church family. God does not create and gays are not born gay. Yeah, that's right. And the majority has been wrong many times and the majority is wrong right here. God says it's against nature. It's not natural. He did not make you gay. Most of the time you'll find out that the gays were abused as children or something traumatic happened and that's what turned them into this whole thing. But there are some times where a, a boy would just be curious and uh, they'll put on a wig or a dress or something and their parents, it's almost like they want it. And they say, oh, he feels like a girl. We should just let him be himself. And then they raised them to be that way. Folks, when I was a kid, there's pictures of me wearing a wig. There's pictures of me wearing a little dress outfit. My, there were times where my cousins put makeup on me when I was a little boy. That doesn't mean that I want to be a girl. We're just playing. Don't act like you never did it. <laughs> That's the thing about it. We'll get, we'll get a hold of your parents and get some of the old pictures out. And <laughs> I think I put my sister's high heels on once, but I broke my ankle. But it's, they're without natural affection. And it says that they are uh, implacable, unmerciful. Uh, now read verse 32 and watch this closely with me. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now, we are not under a theocracy, so putting sodomites to death is not our place. And it's not the place of the U.S. government either. But he's meaning that under the law they were. When the Mosaic law was set up and Israel was under a theocracy, it was a death penalty. We're not that, so we don't call for that. But it's worthy of death. And then it says that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same. It's talking about those of you out there in here who may support it. Those of you who are supporting same-sex marriage. Those of you who say it's okay to be gay. Those of you who run around saying, oh, they're born gay. That's talking about you right here. They not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. That's who this is talking about. That's Sarah Reed. That's these preachers who are standing up and preaching this satanic contradiction of the Word of God in support of same-sex marriage. Now, 
here's why we're not shocked about it is we're told there in Romans 1 but we also see this is a this was prophesied Peter prophesied these false teachers would arise in the last days listen folks every time you see a preacher stand up and support this wickedness or support abortion or uh, some you know a racist or someone you know anybody who's supporting evil that's what it's we, we, we were told this was going to happen Second mm -hmm. Peter 2 1 but there were false prophets also among the people watch even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, same-sex marriage even denying the Lord that bought them how do they deny it because they're teaching the exact opposite of what he taught and bring upon themselves swift destruction when these false teachers like this Sarah Reed stand before God let me give you a little glimpse of what's going to happen all this per, uh, careful political lingo she uses all these catchphrases gone when these people stand before God on Judgment Day, the gimmicks are over. The political nonsense is gone. Every thought that Sarah ever had is going to be exposed. She knows what she's preaching is a lie. And we're going to see the account of how she went from knowing what she was told is true from the Bible to choosing to be a liar in a pulpit. We are going to see when she was all alone and thinking these things out. We are going to hear the compromise that took place in her heart and mind. It's true about you too. If you support this wickedness, just be aware that when you stand before God, it's all going to be aired out. Amen. And all the compromise and all you think about, I know, I know what the Bible says, but I don't care. I'm going to go along with the culture and I'm going to support what's wrong so that I can get along with people. Your day's coming. My day's coming. And that's why I'm preaching what I'm preaching. I'm not going to be one of those answering for this. Amen. Jude warned these wolves would arise from among believers in the churches. In Jude 1 4, it says, For there are certain men crept in unawares, we can say women as well, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men and women, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. They're actually preaching God is love. And so God loves you even if you are in wickedness, even if you are in sexual sin. God doesn't care. God is love. That's taking the grace of God and turning it into lasciviousness. It's a lie. If you're a Christian and you commit these sins, God will chastise you. He'll rebuke you. And if He has to, 1 Corinthians 3, 15-17 says, He will even kill you. Amen. That's not the God being preached today, but that's the God in this book. Yes, sir. And they are denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And what about women preachers like Sarah Reed? One last place. Turn over to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2 and verses 20 through 23. And there are a growing number of women standing in pulpits who are a part of this end time apostasy. All right, Revelation 2.20. I'm going to read verse uh, no, everybody read verse 20 with me. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to in servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed. These women, 
the men that are preaching this stuff, you can look at Balaam. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The women, you can look at Jezebel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it even says that she's seducing, just like Sarah Reed and these other women preachers who are preaching this stuff, they're seducing Christians to commit fornication. In other words, they're being told that sexual sin doesn't matter. God doesn't care about it. And so more and more people are falling into that error. In verse 21, it says, And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. So you say, well, why does God allow Sarah Reed to continue to preach? He's giving her space for repentance. Now verse 22 is the ugly truth. Read that with me. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. These people, this false church that you see, and these false preachers like Sarah Reed, they will be left behind at the time of the rapture, and they will continue on as a false church during the tribulation period and leading people into worship of the Antichrist. Now, you say, how, why, how could anybody do that? How could they be doing what they're doing now? Amen. Yeah. How can you be so clear? It's so clear in the Bible, and you're going to stand up in a pulpit. 200 of them in the state of Ohio are going to stand up in pulpits and say, same-sex marriage is okay. That is a blindness that you cannot describe in any way except full, complete spiritual apostasy. Amen. Yep. And those same people will go into the tribulation period and lead people to worship the Antichrist. Amen. Yep. If God doesn't kill them before that. That's the only if. And we're going to close here, but Jude tells us what will happen to unrepentant false teachers in Jude 1.7. He says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, yeah. are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. That's right, eternal fire. That's it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I can't imagine going along with this thing. I can't imagine being one of these because there's a lot of guys who are compromising with this who otherwise you would think are decent preachers. But this is the great falling away culminating with the rapture. In 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3, go ahead and turn there. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. This is where we're going to wrap it up. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning in verse 3. I'll read this first part as you're turning there. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. So you see, we've got mixed emotions about this. Because on the one hand, it makes us sick. On the other hand, we know that that's what God said would happen right before the rapture. And that this great falling away would be the icing on the cake, the final act, will be the rapture. When true believers are removed, there's no faith left. Yes, that's right. It's a world without believers the moment the rapture takes place. Amen. It's not a, uh, just a falling away first, but there's places where it's referred to as the. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's like a final apostasy that's going to take place. After the rapture, the falling away is complete, and then the Antichrist appears. If you're there, uh, we read verse uh, 3 to begin with, and it closes. After this falling away, which again, the rapture puts the final act on, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, it doesn't mean this, like the next day, but sometime shortly after the rapture, we have a world with no believers left in it, Amen. and that's when the Antichrist, the son of perdition, appears. Amen. Read verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, 
so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's why we believe that what we're seeing right now in Israel, they are ready to build the temple. They've got everything ready. Amen. And that temple will be built sometime either right before or right after the rapture. And the Antichrist is revealed and he'll go into that temple and declare himself to be God. Amen. See, all the pieces are come together. This thing with Sodom is just one of the pieces of the puzzle. The temple being built in Israel is another piece. Look at verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. And that's what we're seeing with this same-sex stuff. Amen. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now there's differences of opinion, but it doesn't matter which one's right. The effect is the same. Some people think that he is the Holy Spirit. Some people think that he is a reference to the church. I don't. Uh, the, the church is never referred to as a he, so that's a hard one to swallow. But either way, if if the church being taken is taken out, that removes the hindrance. Right now, the only thing getting in the way of the whole antichrist agenda is Bible-believing Christians. Right. Once we're gone. There's no hindrance. Every, they can throw their party. <laughs> and in verse 8, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of His mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of His coming. Even Him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all powers and signs and lying wonders. That's why I tell you, you see these... Signs and wonders ministries with all these fake preachers and everything. That's just laying the groundwork. It's getting everybody ready. Verse 10, read that. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. That means right now, this morning, if you reject the truth of the gospel and you embrace the culture of Sodom, that's you. Yes, sir. What about you? Verse 11. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You see, just like I said, these people who are preaching this stuff now, once the rapture takes place, they'll believe the lie and they'll embrace the Antichrist. They'll take the mark. They, they will worship the beast. Yes, sir. What happens? Verse 12. Read it. That they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. See that? It's inseparable. It's, he says that they had pleasure in unrighteousness. That's these people. That's the Sarah Reeds and the Why Marriage Matters group. They have pleasure in unrighteousness. And they are rejecting the truth. And for that reason, they are prepped and ready the rapture takes place and they then are given over to this strong delusion and they will lead people to worship Antichrist. So what's the, what's the cure? What's the end game for us? Preaching the Gospel. God has not called us to reform culture. God has not called us to make everybody behave the way they ought to behave apart from a living faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Preach how that Christ died for their sins according to the Scripture. Hallelujah. And that He was buried and that He rose again the third day according to the Scripture. And if that person will repent, which means turn from what they are and their belief system up to that point, and they will turn to Jesus Christ who died for their sins, was buried and rose again, trusting in what Jesus did on the cross and His shed blood and being raised from the dead, they, at that moment, they're saved. Amen. Amen. And that's the only cure for this disease that is taking over our world. That's the only cure for this apostasy that is taking over churches and our nation and the world. That's the only cure. But thank God for the cure. Amen. Amen. If you've received Jesus Christ this morning, all this is very interesting, but you have nothing to worry about. Jesus saves. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank You, Lord, for this time in Your Word. And we pray for all of these false teachers, Lord, that 
some of them may just be going with the flow of their denomination or whatever and you might still be able to reach some of them and those poor people some of whom at least are poor people in the pews who have no idea what they're getting caught up in open their eyes Lord and Father we pray that many of these people in these apostate churches will be saved and come out and Lord, we thank you for Bible-believing churches. There still are many, many thousands here in America and around the world who continue to preach the gospel and take a stand for what's right. And thank you for this group who has come here this morning loving your word and wanting to serve you. Bless everyone, Lord, and give us opportunity to proclaim that gospel truth to someone during our week. In Jesus' name, amen. you and if you're not saved right now believe on the Lord Jesus Christ now shall be saved that's all there is to it and if you are saved but you've been selling out compromising I want to give you a moment right here and now to pray and say Lord help me to stand give me of your spirit the boldness to stand Help me not to go along with this apostasy. Help me to warn others of the road that they're on and that it leads to destruction. Help me to be willing to take loss, to lose a job, lose friends, lose whatever it is, to take a stand. And folks, that doesn't mean like while you're working, you stop working and start preaching to people. But it simply means when called upon, when you're put on the spot, that you simply speak the truth in love. Amen. Because if you don't love people enough to tell them the truth, you don't really love them. Amen. And you're only going to do it, God's help. Amen. And you'll only do it in the right spirit when you do it in His spirit. Yes. So just take a moment and pray. Lord, help me. Lord, take this small little church here made up of believers and then you've got thousands of them around the world make us an army Amen. who don't wield a gun but we wield the sword of the spirit we preach the word in season out of season and we seek to be a god pleaser not a man pleaser in jesus name let's sing the third verse
one last thing before we send you your way, and that is, as of Friday, I have resigned my job. And I am now going to be, I am not retiring. People keep congratulating me on retiring. And I'm, I'm trying to be nice and say, I'm not retiring. I'm no longer going to spend 60 hours a week for the man. Amen. I'm now going to spend 120 hours a week for the Son of Man. Hallelujah! Amen? Amen. So pray for me that uh, I get through one last week of uh, work and uh, get through this, and then we just, all we want to do is more of what we're doing and more ministry and more preaching and more teaching and more everything that God wants us to do. So uh, thank you for your prayers and appreciate you continue.